the all the different characters that I made into this mystery. Perfect. All right. So could I have uh, some kind of object? An object. Candlestick. A candlestick. A candlestick. All right. And could I have fill in the black blank? The mystery of. Captain Hair. Captain Hair. Captain Hair. Hair. Uh, the Hair. 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 Like, this is a, I, if you keep saying your rainus, I'm not going to take it. It's not happening. I'm uh, doing like a 1940s mystery play. The what? The mystery of the, the missing belt. Thank you. Yeah. No, don't cheer me with your rainus. First one touching on the back of the neck right now, you take this experiment very seriously. You're going to be the sound effects guy for the radio play. Every single sound effect that Colin suggests, you're going to make the wrong sound effect, the incorrect sound effect for whatever Colin suggests. I'm going to count from one to three, take words wide awake. When I do so, it will be so. You'll take this very seriously. Only person will touch on the back of the neck right now will be wide awake for this. One, two, three, wide awake guys. Hey, look at me, sir. Standing in place. Excellent. Good. Hey, look at me. Hey, sir, look at me. Good blank stare now. Good. And maintain that throughout the experiment. Good. Now you're going to make the incorrect sound effect for everything that Colin suggests. Colin, face Colin. Good. Loudly and clearly into the microphone. Uh, doorbell. First one touching on the back of the neck right now. I'm going to count from one to three and say the wide awake while I do so. You're going to wake it from the hypnosis. When you wake it from the hypnosis, you're going to play all the characters that Colin comes into contact with. You'll morph and change into each character. When Colin points to you, you'll speak accordingly. I'm going to count from one to three and say the wide awake while I do so. It will be so. Here we go. You take this very seriously, very seriously. One, two, three, wide awake. That's open. Standing up here. Stand right there. Good. Excellent, and just go ahead and face this way. Good. Just stand where I'm standing right here. Good. Stop right there. Perfect. And Colin, what's the uh, radio play about again? It's um, called The Mystery of the Missing Belt. When I snap my fingers, The Mystery of the Missing Belt will commence. Here we go. From Hollywood, the screen director's playhouse. <laughs> The year was 1941. The place, New York City. My name is Dick Danger. I'm a private dick. Unless you get in my way, then I become a very public dick. A lot of boys were overseas fighting for democracy. I was back home trying to make the streets clean. Getting rid of all the filth, the murderers, the thieves that seemed to bubble up through the sewers in this great city. So I gotta say, over the last couple of weeks, not much has been happening. In fact, I was getting a little low on dough. There was only one big case that seemed to be happening in town. A famed collector, Jason Green, had been murdered. Murdered in his mansion right beside Central Park. And stolen the belt of Moses. Green had collected various bits of clothing that belonged to historical characters throughout the years. He had quite an intense collection, but this, this was the most valuable. A belt that was actually worn by Moses. I thought, man, if I could get part of that case, I'd be on easy street. I knew there was a big reward, but it didn't look like it was going to happen. I was working late in my office. My office is right beside the airport. Outside, I could hear the plane from Cleveland come in. so happy to see their loved one, they started to weep. <laughs> My beautiful secretary, Juanita, was working. 
I had to bring some bad news to her. Hey there, doll. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? Never better. Good. I'm so glad to hear that, because listen, as you know, things have been a little tight lately. I haven't had a case in a while. And I'm not going to be able to pay you this week. Well, it's just like every other week lately, darling. Well, I, I promise as soon as I get some cash, you're top of my list. Tell you what, I'll even take you off to a movie and a dance. What do you say? Oh, you know I love cutting a rug, Dick. What I loved about when you did was everything she said sounded dirty. <laughs> and she was a great worker. Suddenly the telephone rang. <laughs> it was a really good looking telephone. <laughs> I picked it up. It was the chief of police. He wanted me to get involved in the Jason Green murder and the theft of the belt of Moses. This would be my big chance. Chief, so you really want me to get involved? Yeah, we need you to find the belt there, laddie. Very, very valuable, you know. I understand. The chief is from Brussels. <laughs> so were there any clues? Yes, they found a fingerprint where his belt, where he was wearing it on his waist. He was wearing Moses' belt on his waist? He was wearing it around his waist to keep up his trousers. Yeah, I understand the objective of the belt. In the back. So did he, that's why he was wearing it as such. So he was wearing Moses' belt, then he was killed and the belt was taken. Exactly. Where was the fingerprint? The fingerprint was right above the waistline. Who did it belong to? It belonged to a suspect. <laughs> the police have recently confiscated 35 pounds of marijuana. They had not solved the case since. It looks like it was up to me. All right, Chief. I'm uh, going to solve this case. There's still a big reward, right? Yes, it's upwards of two dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Times are tough. I had to take any money that came along. I ran down the stairs. <laughs> I wish I hadn't worn my corduroy pants. <laughs> then I whistled for a cab. <coughs> It's so hard to whistle in New York City. <laughs> and a cab pulled up. I jumped in. Take me to the uh, Jason Green Mansion, please. Hey, where's that? Oh, it's uh, 521 uh, West 54. Is that on the west side or the east side? Well, it's west 54, so I'm going to say the west. Okay, I'll jump around the west side until we find it. All right. Hey, listen, you're a cab driver. Yes, you guys is. know what's going around in town. You have your ear to the ground. You heard about this this murder and the, the theft of Moses' belt? Uh, that's not what we're talking about on the radios. Oh, yeah. yeah. Does it mean any scuttlebutt? Anything that may help? I believe from what all the other cabs are telling me that it might be in the hands of a suspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One with fingerprints. Yes, yes, of course. That just really narrows it down. Suspect with a finger. Nothing more than that? Uh, we don't know much more than what we hear on the CB, except we did hear a mysterious figure with a lip was seen flipping away from the mansion last night. Oh, that could help, thanks. No problem. Here's the mansion, drop me off. Okay. I left the cab. I didn't pay. <laughs> there was the mansion. I pushed open the door. Ooh, ha. Huh. I threw out my back. It's been a while since I had any exercise. I made my way into the mansion. There was still the top hung line where Jason Green was dead. Right beside him was a candlestick. A candlestick that he did. Mr. Green was killed by the candlestick in the library. <laughs> this was starting to sound familiar. There have been various other murders over the last couple of months. Collectors of various rare relics who had all been murdered with various things. A lead pipe, a wrench, a piece of rope. It didn't make much sense. I guess they had all been connected somehow. But who would want this? Then, under the carpet, I found a small token. A token that you might use in a board game. This could mean something. Just then, I heard a creak of the door behind me open. A woman walked in and played the trumpet. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. 
red hair, flaming red hair, emerald eyes, skin like alabaster, beautiful figure, a voice like silk. Excuse me, can I help you? I see someone finally did old Mr. Green in. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, did you know Mr. Green? I knew him intimately. Ah. <laughs> well, not to take a line to read between there, I take it you had relations of some sort? Yes, we were very, very close after all, and I was named as the trustee in his will just last week. Really? And what's your name, by the way? My oh. name is Violet Violet Sweet. <laughs> Violet Violet Sweet. Oh, I know you. You uh, used to be married to the Game King. Indeed, I was. I was Violet Violet and Parker Brothers until a couple of years yes. ago. <laughs> I hear you got most of the Parker Brothers games in the settlement, in the divorce. I became a very wealthy woman. Although I'm starting to think, was it a divorce? Or was it a odd death? I don't like to talk about it, sir. Why not? It's just very painful after all. It's hard for a girl to find a good man in this city. I suppose. And what brings you in here? Well, me and Mr. Green, we have been making acquaintance of each other lately, and I just figured we would maybe have a little rendezvous tonight. Oh, a little rendezvous? Or maybe you just came back to get something that you didn't quite pick up. Last time you were here. What are you trying to say, sir? What I'm saying is you came here to get the belt of Moses. <gasps> Never. Yes. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and then you struggled. You killed him with a candlestick. But then you noticed it. The belt wasn't anywhere on. It wasn't on his pants. It wasn't in the case where it was. You know where it was? Right here. Beside all the snake skin that had been shuddered by all his pet snakes. It was right there on the wall and you missed it. Why well, didn't I think to look there? He always kept his valuables with his snake skins. <laughs> I can't believe that works. <laughs> I was just talking to something that came to my mind, but apparently I hit the nail on the head. She was the one who murdered Jason Green. Well, it looks like your time of killing people and making some money is over. Well, you might have a clue, detective, but you don't have anything that they call evidence. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was pretty good. But then she made a fatal mistake. She pulled out a gun. You have a gun. Uh, maybe you killed at least two people. You don't want to make it three, do you? I have nothing less to lose now, sugar. You know too much, and that's got to be taken care of. Another excellent point. <laughs> Things were not looking good for Dick Gage. I looked around to see if there was any of the uses of weapon. Then I saw one of the snake skins. I pulled it and threw it at him. <laughs> the snake was still actually alive. <laughs> its mouth captured the gun, kissing her knuckles. The gun fell to the ground and went off. Wow! It was pretty impressive. <laughs> then just outside I could hear the paddy wagon pull up. <laughs> On off hours it was a ice cream truck <laughs> for people with no sense of rhythm. <laughs> oh baby, you could have had it all. You got looks, you got money. Why can't people kill him? Because I had it all, but I wanted more. Why did you want the belt? Because it's Moses' belt, sugar. That's got to be worth at least thousands and thousands. It's worth millions and millions. Oh, no! <laughs> I'll split it with you. No, no! <laughs> I mean, I've already got a few million of my own. I can split it. No, 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 you're getting into my mind. No, I swore that I would keep the city clean. And that starts with me. I'm afraid you're going to the big house. You'll probably get the chair. I'm too beautiful to get the chair, sugar. No, you're not. You're just a vicious killer. Well, you got me there. <laughs> just then, the police chief came in. Chief! Hey, see, I got her there, laddie. I did. Violet Violetson. 
Yeah, and we always suspected it was her right from the very beginning. Because why didn't you get her? Because we smoke a lot of the pot that we confiscated. <laughs> okay, well, take your order. All right, come with me, laddie. Well, I'll be careful with my delicate wrist. I'm sorry he called you laddie. <laughs> it's okay, sugar, I'll be called Woods. I'm sorry uh, that you end this way. I just hope you know that when I get strapped into the chair, the last thought that's going to be passing in front of my eyes before I meet my maker is going to be you, sugar. Huh. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I mean, we don't really know each other. <laughs> Quite an impression on oh, really? Thank you, really. Oh, I'm sorry it didn't work out better. That's all right. I'm, you know, life is full of regrets after all. I guess. You're another one of mine. <laughs> Take her away. All right. Nothing to see here. Show's over. But there's, there's just us here, so yeah. Well, I, I, you didn't have to look anymore if you didn't feel like it. I know you've had quite a day. Well, thank you. You're welcome. going on in my head. I was just trying to make this place a better place. Get rid of the crime. Make this a place where parents would want to raise their kids, where families could start, where lovers could just love without any kind of worry. Me, I, I was tempted too much by that sign. I almost, I almost said yes when she asked to split Split the money with me. I, I couldn't do it. I hate myself for being so weak. I found myself in, at the park. I sat on the park bench. Off in the distance, I could hear an owl. <laughs> A suicidal owl. <laughs> Just didn't take it anymore. <laughs> As I sat there feeling sorry for myself, wondering what the hell does it all mean? I don't know where came this old man, bent over from the ravages of time, with a wisdom in his eyes I've never seen in anyone before. And as he slowly made his way to me, I stood right beside my bench, and then he said one sentence, one sentence that totally changed my life. I see you found my belt. <laughs> Thank you. 